Hello guys, I'm here at Studio ADI who have made all these amazing creations, everything from AVP to The Thing and beyond. And here is Alec Gillis, oh. owner of ADI Creature Maker, director of Harbinger Down, yes. Renaissance Man. <laughs> Man Thank you. Town. <laughs> man. So last year I discovered the film Lair of the White Worm on Netflix. Comes a new classic thriller with a bite. <laughs> Ken Russell's The Lair of the White Worm, starring And I got such a kick out of it and I was tweeting about it and my good friend Adrian Bott saw that I was super excited about it, happened to have an actual prop from the film, and since he has a small daughter who's kind of scared of it and it freaks her out a little bit. He decided to send it over to me and let me take care of him. His friends, Mary and Lord James Dampton, Angus sets out to destroy the horrible white worm and his evil worshippers before they make a living sacrifice of the young virgin Eve. And when I got him, he was kind of falling apart a little bit because he's, you know, an older guy, he's made of foam, you know, these things don't last forever. But I brought him to Alec, and Alec has fixed him up for us. We're so excited. Well, now, now he, he is an old guy. He's still an old guy. So we did, uh, we did, uh, um, we wanted to make sure that when we do this kind of refurbishments, we sort of, you know, archival re refurbishments, we don't like start plastering on, um, you know, rubber to, to necessarily take away all flaws because mm -hmm. you still want it to look like a historical thing. You want it people to know that. But what we did was we tried to stabilize the foam rot because mm -hmm. foam latex starts rotting due to UV exposure mostly and time because it's, you know, it's just made from tree sap. So yeah. what are you going to do? Um, so what we did was we did some touch-ups on it, we stabilized it, and we gave it a nice little coating. And anyway, <gasps> there is the, oh my gosh. the worm from Lair of the White Worm. An actual worm. He was nomming on Jesus, if you remember, if you've seen the film. <laughs> Now you're going to have to be a little careful with them, because um, like if you look, I don't know if you can get a shot of like this, this area for some reason is really bad. All this texture is um, kind of crispy and the foam on the inside is a little uh, unstable. We really didn't do a heck of a lot. You can see it like starting to fall apart in there. Uh, it's just what foam latex does. But what we do, and if maybe the, some of your fans are interested in refurbishing, what we do is we try to just do like little color touches to it mm -hmm. to take away, like if you recall, there was a lot of cracks in it. And well, we should have done it before yeah. I picture. Know, I know, I know. Um, so we go back and we do some retouching on it to, to, to like uh, make the color sort of more uniform and true to what it once was. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have this great uh, glue it's called E6000. You can get it at Lowe's and Home Depot, I believe. And we thin it with naphtha, mm -hmm. and it's super toxic. So you have to be careful how <laughs> yes. you do it. We do it in a spray booth so that you don't. Have, and then we just brush it on, and what's you can thin it down with a naphtha so that it soaks right in, so that yeah. you get the you get the strength yeah. of this glue soaking into the foam. And then when it air dries, it gives it this nice gloss, but it also stabilizes all of the. Um, well, it stabilizes some of the rot. At some point, it's going to go away completely. But um, you know what I really like too is when you put a gloss coat on it, all the colors come out. Like look mm -hmm. at all these cool know, looking these beautiful colors and, and blues and, and all that stuff. Oh, and it was very it. dingy before this, if you yeah, recall. Yeah, it was. It was very dingy. His his jaw was falling right out of there. Yep, this jaw was uh, of just its own little piece. Mm -hmm. So we glued it back in, but it's still possible to kind you of. Got to be careful with them. them. But you know, we wanted to give him. One last hurrah. We know that he's not going to last forever, but I wanted to, to use him one more time just to, before we retire him. We're super excited to have him in our Layer of the White Worm theme uh, for our calendar. I'm really excited about being the snake lady. We're going to pose together. Uh huh. So maybe something like this. <laughs> is he going to be like, uh, is he going to have like some Jesus remnants hanging yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, a little, mouth. little, a little bit of you know the hair, and maybe some thorns or something, right. you know, a little bit. But yeah, it's perfect. Well, he is adorable. I think this was uh, this was done by uh, Bob Keen, mm -hmm. who's a guy in England that um, we worked with on Aliens. Mm -hmm. Aliens, yeah. Um, and I remember when the movie came out, we were all like, "What is this weird movie?" <laughs> no, it's so weird. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it before or since. Mm -hmm. It's so unique, and that's I think why I like it so much. It's so bizarre, yeah. and I love the the characters and the and the idea of a of a pagan Roman worm cult. 
in yeah. England. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's like one of a kind. One Why does all this weird stuff happen in little English villages? I know, and stuff? I know. It's so perfect. Yeah. But. Flint unearths a mysterious ancient skull and uncovers a horrifying pagan mysticism. When the skull suddenly disappears, strange things start to happen. <laughs> And Angus begins to suspect the bizarre and serpentine Lady Sylvia Marsh. Like today. <laughs> I am at the Tarzana Caves and we are getting ready to shoot for our comic book Girl 19 cosplay calendar. We're doing Lair of the White Worm. Okay, again. What do you guys think? Nobody's looking. I just finished up our layer of the white worm shoot. It was so exciting. Okay, why did you pick this movie that no one's ever heard of? <laughs> There's many reasons. One of them being I had an actual prop from the film and I wanted to give him one last hurrah on camera. And number three, it's kind of my pagan ode to the spring. So it'll be a springtime in your calendar. This will probably be for March. So be on the lookout.